Okay, this has nothing to do with the video, but I got a mic. Wait, I got a mic. I was told last video that I need to speak up more. All right, I'm gonna figure out how to set this up. This microphone doesn't work for either of my cameras. I got this new camera. It's a Canon 40D, 4000D EOS, something like that. Um, this doesn't have a microphone in port and neither does the G7X. Hi, it's Editing Megan and I actually ended up getting a mic from Target for $30. I haven't used it yet, but I did get one. Link in the description. Hi guys, my name is Megan. Uh, I'm not sure if I filmed an intro to this and I just don't remember, but here's the intro to the video. Here is my plan for this video. This video is going to be the start of basically e either a series, not sure what I want to call it, but it's going to be about true crime. I think when I go to YouTube, I go for probably three things. I watch people review movies or TV shows and, or like react, like Aaron and Joe. Uh, I watched this one girl, I can't remember her name off the top of my head. I watch her, like I always watch PewDiePie react to shows and like, that's like one genre of YouTube I watch. The second one is true crime. Obviously, Bailey Sarian is my queen. I love her. Sydney Black, okay. Her videos are amazing. She is drop dead gorgeous. I love the fact. So like her and Bailey Sarian have like the same type of videos, but Sydney does history. And I was such a history nerd in grade school and in high school and someone told me that I should major in history and I said, I'm sorry, what the hell am I gonna major in history for? Oh, and the queen, Kendall Ray, love her and Josh. Their podcasts, podcasts are so good. I listen to them at work and I just like tune the children out at work and I just listen to them. But yeah, uh, those are like my big three. Those are my big three, not my signs, my, my son. My goddesses of YouTube, that's like the inspiration or that's like what I go to YouTube for. That's like what I do on YouTube and why not make videos that I watch because I genuinely enjoy things like that. But I want to just start out today with a true crime video and I don't know what this series is going to be called, if it's going to be called anything, but... Um, today's case, we are talking about a woman named Dina Schultzer. I might be saying her last name wrong and I apologize. Um, not to her though. Sorry. Dina Schultzer, I heard about this case on TikTok and I don't know if anyone else gets these videos. It's like, things don't disturb me watching all these true crime videos. And then it's like that one case and some girl said that this was the case for her. And I looked into it and it was kind of weird because I couldn't find, like usually you look up and you see like 18 videos of people doing videos like this, sitting down and talking about the case. And I couldn't find anyone doing that and barely found information on her. It was actually kind of hard to find information about her. I mean, I found a lot of information about the case, but then you wanna go back and do things about the killer. So today, Dina Schultzer. Dina Schultzer was born in 1969. At the age of eight, Dina was diagnosed with, I'm gonna butcher this, hydros, hydrocephalus? Let me explain what hydrocephalus is. Maybe increases pressure inside the skull, okay? Older people may have headaches, Double vision, poor balance, urinary inconsistencies, personality changes. She had eight surgeries, eight, at the age of eight. She had shunts in, implanted into her brain, her heart, and her abdomen all before she was 13 years old. So she underwent a lot of head trauma and a lot of things, I know a lot of murder cases all have head trauma. OJ Simpson, head trauma, things like that. We don't know if he did it, sure about it. We two out of every thousand newborns have this, which is more common than I thought it was, but 
that's what she was diagnosed with at the age of eight years old. She graduated from Mars College in Poughkeepsie, New York, or po po Poughkeepsie, Poughkeepsie, New York. I only know that because of the Poughkeepsie tapes and that movie. Um, I did not like that movie. She graduated with a uh, bachelor's degree in psychology. And this is when she met John. She graduated, he did not. Um, and then they eventually moved to Texas and he did not allow her to work. So she was a stay-at-home mother. I don't know. See, this is the thing that's bothering me. Like, I can't find it on here. But they had two children before they ended up having their baby, their baby, Margaret. When they got to Texas, they were a well-off couple who moved from, um, they said that they're moving from Illinois, okay, um, to Fort Worth, Texas in 2000. John worked as a software designer while Dina was a stay-at-home mom to their two daughters, Brenna and Kelsey. See, I knew they had two other kids. Uh, not long after moving, John was a sole breadwinner for the family. He lost his job and started doing freelance. Unfortunately, his last gig was not enough to keep their lifestyle afloat and they soon had their house they soon had their house foreclosed on. After they lost their home, uh, they had discovered a church. This is where things start to take a turn. Um, they discovered the church, the Water of Life Church, through friends. Um, the couple had found the, the church and its teachings appealing. They reportedly made 120 miles round trip several days a week to attend the church. That is a long, we're driving, I ain't, I ain't, that's like me driving down the shore and then driving back, like every day. Hell no, I would never do that. They moved their four into an apartment near the church after losing their previous home. So after this, her relatives, Dina's relatives, started taking a notice into her fascination of the Water of Life Church. Pastor David Doyle, oh no, Doyle Davidson, wow, I was gonna flip it to. He had a great impact on, him, on her, I guess. He believed that he was a prophet sent to Piano or Plant. Palano, Texas, where the Water of Life Church was, um, to spread the message of God. Davidson stated he believed a Jezebel spirit had infected the city that the church was in. I went to Catholic school my whole life. All I know is I'm pretty sure Jezebel was like, Jezebel was like this baddie. She was baddie. And um, people believe that she was like a bad, I I've heard things before that people think like Jezebel is like, she's like sent to like make men weak or something like that. Something I think, I'm looking up. Jezebel was saddled with the reputation of being the bad girl of the Bible, the wickedest of women. We love her for it. His, throughout his teachings, David taught that medicine is witchcraft. So like, you know, me using Tylenol for period cramps would be witchcraft. So she, Dina, thought that everything could be corrected through prayer, which is what their pastor taught. So they followed his sermons religiously. They did everything he said. They went with what he, he thought, they thought what he preached was the word of God. She ended up throwing away all of the cough medicine for their daughters, uh, getting rid of all the medicine in the house, um, and said that prayer would cure diseases, not medicine. Off the bat, very manipulative, very um, dangerous, especially for children um, in the home. I've seen several stories about parents neglecting their kids from care, not even with vaccines. I don't care what vaccine you believe in. Speaking of vaccine, I got my COVID shot the other day. I got my first one. Um, it wasn't bad. Honestly, I just felt hungover the next day, but I still went to work. I didn't have a fever. I was fine. And I had COVID before. And they said it was supposed to be worse for people who had COVID, but um, no. It wasn't bad, so go get it, and we can have best summer ever, 2021. We're all gonna go out, we're all gonna respect the CDC guidelines until told otherwise, okay? We see each other. 
Um, so she became pregnant again in 2003. She gave birth to her third daughter, her and John's third daughter, Margaret, in their home with the help of a midwife because, again, they didn't believe in medicine anymore. She later claimed that she had given birth to twins, a boy and a girl, but the boy had died during the birth and returned to God. See, that is a that is a part I didn't know about this. I didn't hear about that in any of the other research I did. All I know is that she gave birth to Margaret and Margaret, um, Margaret is the victim of this case died during birth and returned to God. Previously, she had suffered from postpartum depression, um, minor ones from her previously previous two daughters, uh, Brenna and I believe Kelsey I said it was. Um, but by the looks of it, she was experiencing it again and some kind of other mental struggles. And the lack of clinical care only served to worsen her conditions. Giving birth to Margaret, Dina tried to kill herself by cutting her wrist. John found her bleeding in the bathroom and didn't think and took her to the hospital. They covered up the injuries with bandages and they healed them at the hospital. This is the start where we see that Dina's decisions and the church and what it preaches is going to affect the life of Margaret. Two days after attempting the suicide, Dina burst out of the apartment and took off running while Kelsey was watching The Little Mermaid on TV. Dina believed that the characters on TV were laughing at her. Kelsey, now five years old, tried to chase after her mother but could not keep up. Police eventually found her and when they approached her, Dina started screaming. She was diagnosed with post postpartum psychosis and admitted to a psychiatric hospital. Dina wanted to stay in the mental health facility a bit longer but John declared Dina would find herself more comfortable at home. Thanks, John. So they prescribed her medicine and it did its job. Dina um, was off of the mental health uh, facility's radar after this point. However, as soon as the condition improved, she went off the medication because she considered medicine evil. Um, and she started having delusional episodes again. It was later found out that Dina was bipolar as well it began deteriorating she was caught making animal noises growling at people and the water of life she had a serious the water of life's teachings had a serious impact on dina's um, ugh, dina's condition she started acting strange keeping a distance from family members who do not agree with her lifestyle or davidson davidson's views thing he taught was the word of god so you know she's gonna believe him um Obviously, her husband John was not up to the same level as she was in believing him and what he preached. Oh. Once she was getting there ready, there were children ready for church. Dina had dressed Margaret, Margaret in white, and she said Davidson wanted to marry the baby. So, there's not just pedophiles in the Catholic Church, they're in every church. Why are you gonna say you're gonna marry a baby? A baby like six months years old that's disgusting disgusting i hate men except my boyfriend and he failed to notify of her mental institution about her condition worsening after church dina said she wanted to give her baby to god john brushed it off again and went the two went to sleep the next morning dina was adamant that god wanted the baby back music and it was spilling the apartment. Dina went to the kitchen and took the biggest knife that they had in their kitchen. With a nine inch blade, she cut off her 10 month year old baby's arms, killing her in the process. Here is a part of the 911 call, which she called in and she reported herself. It says, I cut off her arms. She told the dispatcher on November, in November, 2004. You cut off her arms, he asked. Mm-hmm. That was the conversation that was so far. But when she called in the police, um, they testified that she's confessed and the gospel music and the gospel song, He Touched Me, played in the background. While police arrived, they saw Schulter covered in blood, calmly sitting on the knife, singing Christian hymns. We chanting, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
After this, and when she went to court, the court she testified not guilty by reason of insanity, which the jury found her not guilty by reasons of insanity. She was committed to the North Texas State Hospital and was later released to outpatient status. In the end, um, obviously Margaret was the one who paid the price for her parents' neglect. Uh, it's not just Nina's fault, it's obviously John's fault as well. She gave him warning signs of what she was going to do and what she had planned and he brushed it off and he should have contacted her old mental institution as soon as her health started deteriorating again. He was roommates with Audrea or Andrea Yates, the girl, the, the girl, the mother who also suffered from postpartum depression and the one that drowned her five kids in the bathtub. They were roommates. Two moms who killed their children formed friendship. Can you imagine? Talk about our memories, our fun memories, and the things that we did with our kids. Schultzer told the Daily News. Um, Yates did not want to come on the phone, but she said, did talk about Mary and Mag Maggie, the feeling guilty, remorseful, and sad. Schultzer, 37, already at the hospital when Yates, 42, arrived in the summer. Yates drowned her five children in the family bathtub and Schulter had cut off her daughter's arms in their family home. The woman had much in common. They were both married stay-at-home moms who followed out of mainstream religious leaders. Religion is a problem. I'm, I'm, I'm being facetious, but I, there wasn't much detail about what she actually did. I mean, obviously there's detail about what happened to Margaret, but she didn't put, it just says, you know, she cut off her arms and within the process of that, obviously the baby lost a lot of blood and died, which is a sin in and of itself, but I just, it's so hard when it comes to kids and like, clearly this woman was begging and that's what I feel, I don't feel bad, but I feel, feel something for these mothers who do things like this because they are suffering and she asked for help, she was, almost killed herself um and her husband didn't do much the second time around to get her readmitted and as he should have um maybe margaret would have still been alive today if he had maybe it would have happened a few years later i don't know um i think there is a real problem when religious leaders and pastors or people who are so vulnerable look for and look towards signs and they look and they find the wrong people and they devote their whole lives to these people who are just people they're not special and in and of themselves they're evil as well because they tell their followers to do what they believe is right not what god believes is right is the dina schultzer case um i believe she is out of what's it called she's out of the mental institution now. Uh, I'm not sure where she is. I didn't want to look up where her kids were because even if they are somewhere, I'd rather just let them be and have their lives. And even John, even though he was a piece of shit and could have done more as their father. Um, that is the Dina Schulzer case and just ending this video. Um, RIP to Margaret Schulzer. Schulzer, I know I keep saying it wrong, but she was 10 months there's no excuse for her death it's not like she was sick and something and she died of natural causes she died due to her mother and father's neglect and um she rests in peace to her soul she it was 2004 she probably would have been can i do math 16 today 17 she would have been 17 if she were still alive and it's a shame that her mother thought that she had the privilege to take her out of this world for something I don't know, but that's where I'm going to end this video. And this is my first true crime, true crime case. And it's so weird doing true crime because like you watch these videos and you're just like, oh, it's, it's like they're characters 
on TV. But then if you really think about it, like if you would go and like meet a family that it's exactly like this and like you know like of a family who has a newborn and they have older children and it's just like how shocking would that be to hear that like your family friend cut off her daughter's arms because God was calling her to do it. Like it's so weird. It's so weird to think about but these are real people, these are real stories and it's it's their tragedies and but yeah that's the end of this video um if you like this video i would appreciate you subscribing um i would like to do more i might do i might plan out like a schedule to do like i'm not gonna say but i would like to eventually get up to making two videos a week and one video a week would be a true crime or a history video and the other video would be something else something my my fashion or like nails or hair related like something like that i hope everyone stays safe out there and stays healthy um remember don't listen to men <laughs>